Hey guys, welcome back to Pop'em Up Chem. In this video, we're going to be looking at rate of reaction, building on what we looked at in the previous video. We're going to build on those ideas further, give a proper definition of rate of reaction, and focus a little bit more on the calculations. So to get you started, a little review of last video, draw a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution graph to show increasing temperature and its effect on the rate of reaction. So when we have Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves, we have energy on the x-axis and number of particles on the y. If we have a lower temperature, as we increase the temperature, we see the curve shift to the right and slightly down. So we see that peak, the average peak is shifted. Now, when we look at the activation energy, we can see that the area that is to the right of the activation energy is higher underneath the curve it is of the higher temperature indicating a higher rate of reaction due to an increased frequency of successful collisions. So now we want to build up a definition of reaction rate. So generally we understand the reaction rate to be the speed of the reaction. However, we want to be a bit more specific than that. So the rate is given by the change in the concentration of the products divided by the change in time. Now, this can also be expressed as the negative of the change in concentration of the reactants divided by the change in time because the rate of reaction will always be positive. So if we're using up the reactants, that would initially look like a negative gradient. So we take the negative value of that for our rate of reaction. So if we have the reaction A goes to B, we can see that the concentration of B would increase over time and the concentration of A would decrease over time, where time is on the x-axis and on the y-axis is concentration. The units of rate are moles per decimeter per second. So in terms of measuring the rate of reaction, there are a few different ways we can do this as I've shown on the table here. Now, when we're thinking about what we need to look out for in terms of when we're confronted with an equation, each of these techniques could be used in different situations. For example, collecting a gas, if the products of an equation have a gas, then we could use the collecting gas. Same with mass lost. If we have gas in the products, then mass will be lost over time, color change, obviously the products being a different color from the reactants so that we can measure the change in absorbance at different wavelengths. Obscured cross, which is just basically when we have a solid precipitate product. Iodine clock, if you produce iodine, then we're going to have an iodine clock reaction. pH, if we have a H plus or OH minus concentration change, from reactants to products in either direction, we're gonna have a change in pH and temperature change, even though we tend not to use temperature change because of issues with heat loss. But all of these will have problems and potential errors that we would need to identify. We're not going to look at that in too much detail in this video. We'll look at that in practicals, the IA and in unit 11. One issue you may have already noticed is by the equation change in products divided by change in time, we come across a bit of an issue with the graph. The concentration time graph has a curve and so the gradient of the line does equals the rate. So a steeper gradient indicates a higher rate of reaction. So by looking at this graph then, that means it would indicate reactions start off quickly, which makes sense because there's going to be a great uh, likelihood of collisions at the beginning of the reaction where the concentration of the reactants are highest, and then they slow down as the reaction takes place because the concentration of the reactants decreases. This leaves us with a few different ways that we can calculate the rate of reaction using a concentration time graph. We have the average rate, or we can calculate an instantaneous rate. 
So an instantaneous rate we can kind of break down into two parts, one at a given time and the second one being the initial rate. The average rate we calculate by using the concentration and the time change at the end of the reaction. That ends up giving us a straight line gradient, if we like, from these two points. So we can already see that that's going to be an estimation of the rate of reaction. So there are some issues with calculating the rate of reaction in this way. And so it's more useful for some reactions than others because we're effectively missing this whole component of the curve of the actual rate of reaction. Turning our attention to an instantaneous rate, firstly looking at a time, all we need to do is we find the time and then we take a tangent to this curve at that time and find the gradient of that line. This gives us the rate of reaction at any given time. And really the only difference between that and the initial rate is if we take a tangent at time equals zero and find the rate of reaction there, then we have the initial rate of reaction. The initial rate is really useful because it shows us the rate of reaction just as the reaction starts when the concentrations of the reactants are highest and so is often considered the most accurate way of measuring the rate of reaction. So let's take a look at an example. In this question, it asks us to find the rate at 400 minutes, and it's given as a graph of concentration over time with a curve. So here we're going to be finding an instantaneous rate at 400 minutes. So we can see the time on the x-axis is in minutes. So we're going to, first of all, find 400 minutes and draw a tangent at that point that just touches the line at the 400 minute mark. And then we're going to find the gradient of that line, which of course is the change in concentration on the y-axis divided by the change in time on the x-axis. So we can say at 400 minutes, the rate is going to be equal to 1.6 divided by 1600, which is one times 10 to the minus three moles per decimeter per minute. Time for a couple of questions then. First one, calculate the average rate of reaction in which 20 centimeters cubed of gas is produced in 40 seconds. Pause the video to have a go. Pop em up. A nice simple one to start with. Of course, we're gonna do the change in concentration over the time which is 20 over 40, which is 0.5 centimeters cubed per second. In this question, you're going to use this data to find the average rate at which CO2 was produced. Pause the video and have a go. Pop em up! The key with this one is seeing that actually after 70 seconds, the reaction ends and we get no further volume change. So the average rate of reaction, we're going to calculate from the point at which the reaction ends. So we're going to 53 divided by 70, which equals 0.757 centimeters cubed per second. Next one, common exam question, describe how to calculate the initial rate of reaction. Pause the video. Pop them up. So two key components to this answer. You have to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve of the concentration time graph at time equals zero. Last question then, use this graph to calculate the rate at 100 seconds. Pause the video. Pop them up. So here you already have the gradient drawn for you. So you just need to find the gradient of that line, which is the change in concentration over the change in time. 0 0.085 over 240 equals 3.54 times 10 to the minus four moles per decimeter per second. So no practical directly with this video, although there will be lots of rate practicals will do. Worksheet to test your understanding. Thanks again for joining me guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and as always, practice makes
slightly better.